Well, a bombshell new U.S. intelligence report out this this morning makes some stunning admissions about Iran and Israel, and it opens up some big questions as to why the U.S. is meddling in the Middle East. Now, the report shows that Iran had no idea that Hamas was attacking Israel on October 7th. That's what the report says. And that Iran is not actually making nuclear bombs. Again, this is from the CIA, NSA, FBI, all confirming this part of the annual threat assessment report. They come together and they provide this. The report also shows that the U.S. knows that supporting Israel will make us less safe in the United States, and it will cost American lives. Here you go, Mr. President. <laughs> Here's the report on your desk this morning. It shows that Iran didn't know anything about October 7th, and I know you're planning on bombing them. Uh, it also is going to kill Americans. Have a good day. Now, what do you do with it, Mr. Biden? Do you do a State of the Union address where you then double down on going to war with Iran? Of course you do. That's probably what you do. So why are we doing all of this? Why are we meddling in the Middle East? Why are we throwing so much money and weapons and, and putting warships in the Red Sea and in the Middle East? when it's absolutely not in our best interest. Right, war is a virtuous circle. You put it out there, it comes right back. It's a boomerang. So let's take a look at it. This is the annual threat assessment from the Office of the Director of National Intelligence. Our own security acknowledged this about Netanyahu, that he's a dangerous leader who could be the death of us all. They say his visibility as leader, as well as his governing coalition of far right and ultra orthodox parties that pursued hardline policies on Palestinian and security issues may be in jeopardy. You think distrust of Netanyahu's ability to rule has deepened and broadened across the public from its already high levels before the war. And we expect large protests demanding his resignation and new elections. A different, more moderate government is a possibility. So Netanyahu can't be trusted and he's about to be thrown out. He's an extremist. He's dangerous. Uh, this is from the U.S. Intel community. What is his hardline policies they're talking about? Well, his hardline is never will we allow the Palestinians to have a state, period. That's what they mean, hardline. So how do these people exist? Either dead, that's how they exist, or in a continued state of oppression. That's Or the hard eth ethnically cleansed completely out of Palestine into Egypt, into Syria, into tent camps, and so forth. Oh, okay, dispersed. Uh, dispersed, right. yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, how, how does it how does it happen that this so this is the U.S. intelligence agencies writing this? How is it that 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 doesn't trickle down then into maybe stop sending weapons to this to this person? Great question. Like it seems to me that's a no brain a no brainer. Like, hey, we we think this guy's a really really dangerous guy. Maybe stop sending him weapons. Right. Our our intelligence agencies are telling us that Saddam Hussein has weapons of mass destruction, right? So we need to go. So maybe they're getting it totally wrong. Who knows? But right, like we use this all the time as a reason, as a catalyst for these things, because well, we don't have access to it, right? We don't get to see it often, but here we actually literally have this threat assessment. Jody Brown in the chat says, I heard a little half second clip of this on our local news this morning and thought to myself, this will get silenced immediately. <laughs> Thanks for covering <laughs> yes. this. Thanks for covering this redacted. Bravo. Thank you, Jody. But yeah, so this is why they don't want you to know about it. They love war. They want us to go to war. Well, think about it, because the reason we go after Iran so much is because we say they support terrorists, therefore they cannot have nuclear weapons. But this is basically saying that Netanyahu is a dangerous extremist. He can have some nukes, though. It's OK. He gets a few strawberries. Now, the report also says that Hezbollah is calibrating on how to respond. That's a direct quote, calibrating. So they're figuring it out. Now, Hezbollah, I'd like to remind you, was formed with the sole purpose of liberating Muslims from the oppression of Israel. And more specifically, was a response to Israel invading Lebanon in 1982. That is why they call them anti-Semitic. It is not an anti-Semitic organization. It is an anti-Zionist organization completely, although they do hold all Jewish citizens uh, all Israeli citizens and Jewish people accountable for the Zionist government, which is clearly problematic, right? You can't say that collective punishment is wrong if it is okay for the Jews. It has to be, you can't say Palestinians don't deserve collective punishment for their government. If you believe Jewish people do, you can't have it both ways. So um, I'm not defending Hezbollah here, right? I am reminding you that they're, how do you say this, Rassandich? 
like your raison d'etre. Yeah. yeah. Your reason for being right. is to end the oppression of Muslims from the Zionist government. Nevertheless, Hezbollah, according to this report, will collaborate with Iran to stop Israel from the attack on Gaza. And since they know that they would not win an all out war against Israel, what will they do? Attack Americans, according to this report. They're saying in Iraq, uh, in Iraq, Iranian-aligned militias almost certainly will continue attacks against U.S. forces in Iraq and Syria. So you can either look at this, you can look at this one way, is like, get the F out of there now. You know that they're going to attack and kill American soldiers. Why are you there in these illegal bases? Iraq doesn't want us there. I thought we left Iraq. No, no, we've added another base recently. So they're going to be attacked and they're going to be killed. American soldiers are going to be just like they were in Yemen. Again, this is going to continue to happen, and President Biden knows it. So you can use this and say, get them out now, if you're a smart leader, or you can keep them out there like lambs to the slaughter. Just put those men out there, and so they'll get killed. Right. So what we're saying is this makes us dangerous by supporting this extremist government because then they want to attack us for our alignment. So you could say, let's break ties and make our guys safer, mind our own business. Or you could just write it down on a piece of paper and do nothing. That seems to be the way we're going. Now, according to Hezbollah, Iran is the best example we've got that, of an Islamic state. That's why they are aligned in their position against Israel and the United States. But the United States uses this to say that's why Iran is dangerous because they support terrorists. Well, the U.S. is supporting Israel's terror on Gaza, but we have nukes. So that's a bad faith argument, doesn't hold any water. Nevertheless, they sell us this idea that we have to be at war with Iran because they could have nuclear weapons, even though our current assessment is they do not. Take a look at this. Uh, it says Iran is not currently undertaking the key nuclear weapons development activities necessary to produce a testable nuclear device. Since 2020, however, Tehran has stated that it is no longer constrained by any of the uh, the nuclear armaments trade, treaty limit, limits. And Iran has greatly expanded its nuclear program, reduced IAEA monitoring, and undertaken activities that better position it to produce a nuclear device if it chooses to do so. Therefore, we conclude Iran probably, you see how I highlighted that for you? Because the word probably is doing some heavy lifting here in that they think that they could probably, possibly, Maybe. Uh, only the fact that they're saying that Iran has not been cooperating with the IAEA. Well, that's not what the IAEA said themselves. Here, I want to bring you this clip from the head of the IAEA. That's the International Atomic Energy Agency, Rafael Grossi, who was there last March of 2023 and said, Iran's cooperating. We're good. We're not mad at them at all. Um have, for example, the enrichment activities uh, up to 60 percent um, uh, been in detail, technical detail, or have you been discussing this with the uh, um, heads of state you have been meeting regarding that it is hardly to explain an enrichment program to this extent with a uh, um, non-military enrichment program? Have they been able to give you an expl explanation for that? Well, in fact, they don't need to give me an explanation of why they enrich at 60 percent. What we, what we need to ensure is that we have the necessary ability to inspect the activities there. They enriched at the levels that they declare. There are certain uh, parameters, as you know, between an inspected state and the IEA. They tell us what, this is what we are going to do, and then we perform the necessary inspections. So in that regard, uh, in terms of motivations and reasons, which I believe is a little bit behind your question, uh, we don't discuss that. For us, what is important, the only thing that matters is that we are able to inspect, that we are able to account for every gram of enriched material that is there. And, and, and this is the spirit of the, of the exchanges. And we have been working um, satisfactorily in, in that regard. There have been other types of issues, and, uh, as, you, as, you, as you know, uh, but they are not directly related to this particular issue. Okay. So the IAEA says we're actually pretty good on monitoring 
Iran and their nuclear enrichment. So why does U.S. intelligence said that they uh, have reduced IAEA monitoring? Do they know something they're not telling us? Or are they putting words in the IAEA's mouth, which is what the Senate bill that was passed, saying that it is now the Senate's resolution to be against Iran's nuclear armament. Uh, they also said the IAEA was pissed with Iran, which the IAEA has said they are not. So they're lying. They're making it up. They assume that we just won't rewind the tape. We did here on Redacted. So I'm just wondering, where is that inconsistency? In fact, we've never had solid proof of Iran having nuclear weapons, yet we were super happy to tank their economy during the Obama administration with sanctions. That was the whole point of this super evil book called The Art of Sanctions. Uh, this book is horrid because the author tries to make his case that the sanctions against Iran during the Obama years worked better than the Iraq sanctions because he did it better because he worked for the State Department and because Saddam Hussein was such a crazy person that was beyond the pain of sanctions. Now, leave out for a second that Saddam was a CIA asset and there were no weapons of mass destruction. The fact that the U.S. also launched the world's first government-led cyber attack against Iran's centrifuges with Israel may be the explanation for why we think those sanctions worked or it could be because it hasn't been proven yet that Iran has nuclear weapons. Thus, you see the word probably again. I don't know. What do you think? Also, Iran never retaliated for Stuxnet. Uh, but here is what we hived, high-fived ourselves for doing to them. Look, when our sanctions started is in about 2011 and boom, their GDP starts to shrink. Shrink, shrink, shrink. The, the result, the author says, by most measures, a tremendous success. Iran's economy went from GDP growth of 3% to a 6.6% contraction between 2011 and 2012. And Iranian unemployment and inflation remained in the double digits. We're happy that we caused those people pain, people who were out of work, people who couldn't feed their families, people who couldn't get medicines. Awesome, right? We're so happy we did that. Now, why should we care? Uh, well, Iranians are humans. We should care if other humans are not allowed to live in a thriving society. Uh, also, it inspires terrorist attacks against us because we're also putting our troops at risk. Uh, the report reads like an admission that the U.S. is acting against its own interest in supporting Israel and fostering more conflict with neighboring countries. And yet that is what is happening. And yeah, this isn't new information at all. As John Mearsheimer writes in his great book uh, called The Israel Lobby, it's a really fascinating read. He writes that the U.S. government documents reveal a keen awareness that supporting Israel hurts America's interests. And he pulls from multiple sources, both within the Pentagon and the State Department and at the United Nations. And frankly, it puts all Americans in danger. Um, but the Israel lobby in Washington keeps the pressure on on Iran at all costs. So the Israel lobby, of course, runs Washington, D.C., and runs Congress, as you know, and basically has Congress doing the bidding of Israel no matter what. Of course, Israel wants Iran uh, off the map and wants them gone. They remember we played you the sound bites, of course, of Benjamin Netanyahu in front of Congress telling Congress that Saddam Hussein needs to be taken care of. And then we did the bidding of that. We did the same in Libya. Um, and uh, they want Iran. Iran is the third on their list. So here's what John Mearsheimer writes. He says, American policy toward Iran has been heavily influenced by the wishes of successful, successive Israeli governments. Tehran has made several attempts in recent years to improve relations with Washington and settle outstanding differences. But Israel and its American supporters have been able to stymie any detente between Iran and the United States and to keep the two countries far apart. American policy towards Iran, of course, has always been heavily influenced in this way by them. So they, they absolutely don't want us tied to Iran or supportive or helpful in any kind of way. He goes on to write, quote, This unequivocal support for Israel undermined the pro-American government in Beirut, strengthened Hezbollah, and drove Iran, Syria, and Hezbollah closer together. Results that were hardly good for either Washington or Jerusalem. And then he says, finally, the Israeli lobby has successfully convinced many Americans that American and Israeli interests are essentially identical. In fact, they are not. In this book, he really paints the picture that, of course, you'll have Netanyahu get up in front of Congress with President Biden and tell all of the Americas, you know, tell everyone in America that this is your war, too. He said, right. He told us all that what's happening right now is our war. It's an attack on American democracy. OK, 
uh, our meddling there, and this intelligence report shows us that our meddling there, in fact, does make it our business because it will hurt America. So here's an idea. Maybe we, we leave. We get out of there. We pull Americans out of harm's way. The Israel lobby has you know, successfully convinced many Americans that American and Israeli interests are essentially identical. He says, in fact, they are not. So neocons in Congress, though, have been pushing us towards a war with Iran, and they've been lying to the American people. You know, Senator Mike McCall immediately jumped into action. Like, he was all over this, like, stink on a monkey on October 7th, right? As soon as this happened, he was like, I, you know what? I'm preemptively going to give President Biden the ability to go to war. Like, we, that's what we do in Congress. I'm just going to write a paper and give him, give him powers to go to war with Iran um, just because I feel like it. And he was on all the talk shows. Watch. Remember, Iran has financed Hamas. They gave, you know, $150 million to them just last year. They give them the rockets that they fire into Israel. And the idea that they're not complicit with this or have fingerprints is absolutely insane. Oh, is it? Okay. Well, what about your own intelligence report that just came out? It says the opposite of that. Mike McCall, he says uh, that, you know, Iran is certain to blame as it relates to October 7th, despite, again, what the threat assessment report says. This is the nightmare scenario we've always uh, been worried about. Uh, Israel, there's no question they're going to go into Gaza. It's their 9-11. They want justice. They're going to go in and take out Hamas, which is like ISIS. They, you know, I went to that kibbutz where they killed all the little children there and decapitated them. It's going to happen. So then what is Iran going to do? Are they just going to help their proxies like Hezbollah and, and others? Or are they going to get directly involved in this conflict? Either way, Maria, you know, my committee is charged with war and peace. My committee has the power to declare war or issue an authorized use of military force. We don't want to do that. But if this escalates, that's what worries me the most. Tell me what you're referring to. Are you saying that the United States will have to get involved? Well, if we want to stop, say, Israel from obliterating Iran, uh, yes. And that would be a question for the American people. Uh, do we want to get involved to defend Israel? Uh, right now, we're just providing weapons and training. We're not involved. We're not firing our, our, our missiles from our destroyer ships in the Mediterranean. Uh, but the minute that happens, it does trigger the War Powers Act. And so uh, that's why we have to be so careful here and pray that it does not escalate to that level, um, because uh, what would follow after that would be very um, bloody. Yeah, which is exactly it what you like want. It sounds like you expect which is exactly what you want, by the way. Well, sir, I have a new yeah, report it's... to show you that shows that literally the sentence, I forgot to bring the screenshot, Iran did not know about October 7th in advance. So Barna Basic in our Rumble chat says the intelligence report is bullshit. But so, why would we admit things that we're trying right. to sell? So this is what I'm curious that this is, and you might you might be totally right. I uh, mean, well, some I, of it is bullshit, sure. Yeah, and I would love to know more about this, but I mean, what exactly... What do we get if we get what do we get if we we leave and we stop meddling in this area? Right. We protect Americans from not getting attacked. We can bring our own interests back home and reinvest it in the United States. We can defend our own southern border where we don't have any military, but we we certainly have them in Iraq in military bases. Um Lindsey Graham, you know, he's so certain about this. He Wait, wants I want to hear what Philip had to say before we go on to Oh, yeah, the, just on that th the thing that Mike McCall said, which is something that just really infuriates me. And it's it's this idea. He, he said, uh, all, we, all we're doing is sending them weapons. Right. I mean, right. it's just like, oh, that's all we're doing. And training. If two people get in a fist, yeah, if two people get in a fist fight and I walk up and hand one of them a knife, I'm kind of responsible when one of them gets stabbed. Or, am I not? Because it's like you're escalating it whether you're yeah. involved in it or not. Yeah. Like, stop I mean, sending the damn weapons. It's exactly what we're doing in Ukraine, right? So... <laughs> We are complicit. We are complicit in the deaths of 500,000 Ukrainians right now by giving them these weapons. Lindsey Graham, though, he absolutely wants this to happen. He's a warmonger and neocon as well. He wants uh, Iran. He's wanted Iran wiped off the map for a long time. I've been saying for six months now, hit Iran. They have oil fields out in the open. They have the um, Revolutionary Guard headquarters you can see from space. Blow it off the map. Yeah. Yeah, so 
<laughs> Wipe him off the map. Lindsay the warmth Graham. of that guy. He really seems like he loves humanity and other people. So, guys, you know, remember this report when your neocon friends start spouting off about how we have to go to war with Iran and how we need to funnel billions of dollars to Israel? It's not in America's interest at all. And if you don't even care about the report, just read John Mearsheimer's reports on it that you have the U.S. government admitting openly multiple uh, diplomats over the years and in Pentagon's own assessments and documents that it's not in America's interest. And Americans, again, at the heart of all of this discussion is what benefit is it for America to be meddling and causing these wars in the Middle East? Mm -hmm. That's all I care about here. I want to know what is it, how is it in America's interest to do this? Um, so, and I, I also, here's another thing. It's always smart to do the opposite of what Lindsey Graham says. Yeah. Like that's a good thing, like a lesson for life. It like is. if Lindsey Graham is doing something one way, just do the opposite. Okay. Just do the well, opposite. Well, and I want to point out too, if we weren't doing all this overseas, that debt clock behind you might actually slow down. Yeah, that's a great point. $34 trillion in debt. When we started this debt clock just a few months ago, it was at $33 trillion. Now it's almost half. Almost Now it's almost up to $35 trillion. Well, now. like Bank of America said uh, last week, it jumps by a full trillion every 100 days. At this, It's unbelievable. So... Yeah, let us know your thoughts on this. I just want to let well. you know a little point of um, housekeeping that we did link to this full report, the original source in the newsletter today, because we try so hard to make sure that you have links to original sources. Uh, I also have downloaded it because I don't trust any links anymore and I keep my own notes. But if you'd like to read it for yourself, go ahead and check out Redacted Newsletter. If you did not get it, seek it out uh, or try and get today's redacted.inc because... Uh, sometimes I notice that maybe a link goes missing from the newsletter and we didn't link you to an original source and then I get upset with myself. But I really, really, really try hard that you have not just CNN's coverage of something, but the report. So um, find it. Find it there at redacted.inc. I really hope you enjoyed watching this video. You know, YouTube thinks that you'll actually like this next video right here. It's personalized based on your own viewing habits. So if you watch the video, please leave a comment. Let us know what you think about it. And we will see you next time, everyone.